yes my dear friend welcome back to the channel very good afternoon to you wherever you are watching me from around the globe it is saturday afternoon here in southeast asia malaysia to be precise wherever you are on the africa continent or you are in europe or even in america today saturday it is a beautiful day here well 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 it is chelsea's match day chelsea brentford yes chelsea brentford well tonight's game personally I just don't know exactly what to say about tonight's game because both teams are performing very poorly in the, in the league this season. Both teams are performing very, very poorly this season in the, in the league. Last season, Brentford ended the season on ninth position. This season, they are 16th. Chelsea, last season, we ended it on the 12th position. This season, we are, already, we are, we are still on the 11th position. Nothing better has changed. And we know head to head with Brentford they are a team that always come up against Chelsea so personally I just don't know what to say about them but quickly I want to remind you that tonight's game is going to be Nicholas Jackson against Ivan Tony <laughs> ah, Nicholas Jackson against Ivan Tony yeah we said we don't want Nicholas Jackson we said he's not prolific he's not yet matured you know, the experience is not there. He's making so much mistakes, missing a lot of goals. But ask yourself, Ivan Tony, since coming back, how many goals did he score? Will he score tonight against Chelsea to prove a point? Or will it be the player that we said we don't want, Nicola Jackson? That will be the one that will score the goal for us. Well, we wait to see because Jackson is in my lineup. Jackson is in my lineup. But before I go to my lineup, dear friend, before I go to the lineup, there are a few news I want to talk about. First of all, we go to France quickly. Kelly Mbappe has been taken off at halftime by Luis Enrique. Mbappe had also been replaced in the second half in the last game versus Rennes. In that case, after 65 minutes, after 65 minutes, yeah, he was taken off in the in the second half at halftime. And. In their previous game also against Reigns, he was taken off in the 65th minute. Many are asking the, que the question or the coach, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? The coach has given an answer. I don't know whether I have the reply here. He replied somewhere. I, I, if, I, if I get a bring for you that, look, very soon we will be doing without him. And so we need to start preparing. It's very simple. He can choose not to play Mbappe any longer to the end of the season because he needs to start planning towards his next season. Yeah. Who is going to question him? Mbappe already made his plans and I don't think the coach would like Mbappe's issue to destabilize the squad. No. No. Well, back to Chelsea. Mauricio Pochettino says he does, he does not understand why some Chelsea fans have begun to boo Raheem Sterling? Someone told me, but I didn't hear it. Pochettino said of the booing. I have only been here nine months. I don't understand why that, why that happens. It is difficult to know why exactly. He is fully committed to Chelsea. He's doing well and he is always very committed. He is one of the players who is at 99% of training sessions, always training and always available. Sometimes he is good, sometimes not so good, like all players. Port is defending Raheem Sterling, and he doesn't understand why he was being booed the last time, in the last game, against uh, uh, Leeds United, when he was being taken off. But the truth is, his inconsistencies are just too much. At 29, he should be doing better. That is my personal opinion. At 29, Raheem Sterling should be doing better. That is my personal opinion. Yeah. You cannot tell me at 29, you are still performing like you are now on the, you know, you are now 18, 19, 20. That needs to be corrected. No, 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 no. It should be on your peak. It should be at your peak. That is how it is. So if at 29 you are being inconsistent, you can imagine Kevin De Bruyne in most games, he's been inconsistent in most games. 
how would Manchester City look like or how would Pep Guardiola be feeling? I understand Poch will have to defend his players, protect the players. Yeah, I understand. But he knows exactly what we are talking about. Well, to some other news, John Obi Mikel on Victor Osim. He said, I keep sending him Victor Osim and text messages, calling him and making sure he joins Chelsea. I know he loves Chelsea, but other clubs want to sign him at the end of the season. Didier Drogba is also speaking to him, sharing his ideas, and we've been telling him why we love the club that is on Victor Osimen right there. All right, from what I said to you earlier on about Luis Enrique and Mbappe, this is where what I was looking for. Yeah, Luis Enrique on Kelly Mbappe suck off at halftime. He said, I have been in football for quite a long time. You must know that everything is important in this kind of club. Sooner or later, we will, we will play without Mbappe. We have to get used to that. Like I said to you, they will have to get used to playing without Mbappe. So he's doing the right thing in the interest of the club. All right? Quickly, dear friend, before any other thing, let me go straight away to my predicted lineup for tonight's game. My predicted lineup for tonight's game. Quickly. All right? In the goal post, like I said earlier on, I will start with Nicolas Jax, uh, Petrovic in the goal post. Petrovic. Yes, I am not going back to Sanchez. No. Petrovic remains my number one. In defense, I will, I will want stability in Chelsea's defense going forward. Stability. That means that I will still go with Malugusto on the right side of the field, Benchua on the left. Center of defense, I will have Levi Cowell and Disasi because I will want stability. Thiago Silva, I understand his feet, but Maybe in the second half, the last 15 20 minutes, he can come in then. But for the stability of the back four, I will still continue with Ben Tewell, Levi Cowell, Disasi, and Malugusto. At the center of the midfield, it's still Enzo Fernandez and Moise Casaido. Then we have Conor Gallagher playing the number 10 role. This number 10 role, preferably, preferably, I would have loved. Moedric to play the number 10 role but Raheem Sterling's situation right now, I'm not happy about it and so Moedric will have to come to the left side of the wing of the attack Kopama on the right then Gallagher playing the number 10 role assuming Raheem Sterling is being consistent, I would have said okay, let Moedric continue the number 10 role that he played and then Raheem Sterling will be on the left flank. But looking at it right now, with the booing last, the last time, if I were the coach, I would let Moedric take the left flank, Kopama on the right, and then Gallagher on, the, on number 10 row. Heading the attack will be Nicholas Jackson, dear friend. That is my predicted lineup. Heading the attack will be Nicholas Jackson. So it's going to be Nicholas Jackson against Ivan Tony. Who is going to carry the day? We wait to see. Looking at the position of both teams, both clubs. Well, before I go to my... Okay. What do you think should be the prediction? Scoreline prediction. Scoreline prediction tonight game. Dear friend, I will expect both sides to score a goal. But I will go for Chelsea 2, Brentford 1. Chelsea 2, Brentford 1. That is my scoreline prediction. All right. In conclusion, before I let you go, FC Bayern Munich played a drunk game against Freiburg last night. And Bayern Leverkusen can go 10 points clear on top of the Bundesliga if they will be able to win against Cologne on Sunday. So, Bayern, FC Bayern against played a 2-2 draw last night against Freiburg. A game that they should have won and win convincingly, but that did not happen. So, Bayern Bakuzin, that is Alonso's club team, Javi Alonso. He will go 10 points clear if they're able to win on Sunday against Cologne. Yeah, if they're able to win against Cologne. All right, finally, finally, Ruben Amorin has a 30 million euro release clause. Liverpool and other clubs appreciate him. Let's also see what happens at Chelsea. 
the coaches that have been lined up as a replacement for Pochettino, if he sacked among them about three or four, Amorin honestly looks tall among all of them. But in this season, this last season he carried the yeah, Europa League. The last time he carried Europa League. This season, I will expect him to carry the Europa League and carry the Portuguese League. Then I'll be convinced. Otherwise, he will just be another average coach to me. Another mid-table coach. Dezebi, we said Dezebi, Dezebi, Dezebi. Dezebi has not won any trophy so far that we can pinpoint that, okay, this is his trophy. This is like a proven winner. No. There are some coaches that are developmental coaches. There are some coaches that can only play mid-table games. But when it comes to try and tested winners, try and tested coaches, when they get to any league, they will be fighting for trophies. We can't go leave Pochettino and go in for another coach that will be another mid-table coach. No. I don't know why we are not looking at Jose Moreno. I don't know why we are not looking at a coach that will come in that can get the job done. Thomas Tuchel, Antonio Conte, these are proven winners with Chelsea. Nothing prevents us from going back for them. They are pragmatic. These are pragmatic coaches. They will make their demands. You give them what they want. With the squad we have, maybe three or four more additions. They will tell you what they want. Mature, experienced players, three or four more. You add it to the squad, they'll begin to win. Well, it is our match day, dear friend. Let me leave it here. I will come back with my post-match reaction. I don't want to speak much. Enjoy yourself until then. See you when you see me, dear friend. Shalom and peace.